second and six it has on the scoreboard and it's about a half yard short of that. The Bears threw another shutout today 23 nothing over Minnesota. Those of you who watch that welcome to Mile High Stadium. Matt Summerall, John Madden. This is the first offensive series, the second offensive play. Sewell is the man in motion. Elway back to throw. Chased out of the pockets by Ed Jones. And run out of bounds. Just short of the 25 by Mike Hegman. And Eugene Lockhart over there as well. You know, the funny thing about that play, Pat, is Dan Reeves was telling us we want to run John Elway a lot. We want him to go lateral, but to pass the ball to tire out those cowboy defensive linemen. Says so the air may get a little thin on him. Here is the defensive look that Dan Reeves told us he did not want to face. Here's the 4-0. Yeah, see, because they took two downs and they've only gained three yards, so now they're seeing this 4-0 defense. Four defensive linemen, seven defensive backs. The whole way back to throw under pressure again. Chased out of the pocket again. Chased by Jones. Elway back in his own end zone, fires for air, and the pass is almost complete. Diving effort by Clarence K, but Elway made him run a little bit that time. Well, that's what he said. You know, Dan Reeves was saying that, you know, those defensive linemen are getting a little old. He said in the altitude here, he thinks we'll give him a problem later. Said he'd like to see John Elway run him around a little, like this. Not run with the ball, just scramble around and then throw it. You saw too tall chasing him there. Dutton was chasing him. Bye -bye Jeff Coe. Yeah. They'll all have to go to the oxygen now. Jack Wheel. Back to punt. Robert Levett. Back deep for Dallas. Side of his foot spinning over toward the Dallas bench and about out of bounds at about the 45. Not a very good kick. 32 yards by Wheel. Steve Fuller coming out to quarterback the Dallas Cowboys. And here is the defense he will face. Rulon Jones, Greg Cragen, along with Andre Townsend up front. Good group of linebackers and Ryan and Carl Mecklenburg, who goes everywhere. Ricky Hundley and Tom Jackson, the veteran, the oldest linebacker in the NFL. Wright and Harden, Smith and Foley in the secondary. Newsom split wide to the right, and Herschel Walker is the only deep back. Newsom in motion. Valor. High and overthrown. Intended for Banks. Pressure by Ruan Jones. New England beat Miami. Boy, these are terrible days for Don Shula. Washington 14-6 over New Orleans. Detroit 24-13 over Houston. 27-24, Cleveland over Pittsburgh. First time they've ever won in Pittsburgh at that stadium. Second and 10, Dallas at their own 46. Tony Hill wide to the right. Banks comes left. Newsom, by the way, is lined up as a tight end. Valor again flushed out of the pocket. Gets it over the right side to Hill. A gain of eight. Are you surprised, John, that they're coming out throwing like this? Well, I know that that was their plan. You know, they uh, uh, script their first 20 plays now, uh, you know, like the 49ers do. And in those first 20 plays, the script calls for 10 runs and 10 passes. And Danny White said last night that they didn't change that. They're going to go about it the same way they would if he were playing. There is Danny White. Cowboys go with two tight ends now, and one of them is number 62. Brian Baldinger. Lure moves Walker. You think he'd carry it? Oh, he's going to throw if he has time, and he almost did. Mike Sherrard, the pass receiver. He was out of bounds. I'll tell you the big thing, he's out of bounds on this play, but it's still a heck of a throw and a heck of a catch by Sherrard. 
I think that Pallor on this first drive, even though they didn't get a first down, but I think with that throw, he got a lot of confidence. Well, we were talking to Danny White last night, and I asked him what he thought Pallor's strengths were, and he said poise. Yeah, he said that he's never seen him ever lose his cool, except one time and was in a preseason game, said they weren't getting the plays in quickly enough for him. You know, Tom Landry said the same thing about him. He said the kid has a lot of poise. This is Saxon. High kick in the direction of Will Height. He's going to handle, and he's going to be hammered. Just at the 12, Steve Diossi and Bill Bates were the first two down. A 35-yard punt, but effective. Denver will take over at their own 13-yard line now. First and 10. Dallas nothing, Broncos nothing. Big game. We talked about the atmosphere and the enthusiasm of the fans, but yesterday the Broncos at practice didn't even dress in practice gear. They oh, were street clothes. I know this was the loosest group that I've ever seen the day before any kind of game. Maybe that's the way it should be, though. It should be fun. What the heck? This is Gene Wang. Brought down by Mike Hegman. Maybe a yard, not much more than that. Hey, that was some play by Hegman coming right down that line of scrimmage. You know, Lang was trying to outrun him to the sideline, and Hegman just didn't let him. Actually lost two. Gerald Wilhite comes in. So obviously he was not injured too badly on the first play. And here comes that 4-0 defense again. Yeah, that was Sammy Winder that Hegman was chasing down that line of scrimmage. Dutton is out. Bob Otto is in. Randy White brings down Sammy Winder. One of the things you're know, talking about blockers watch Clarence K here number 88 you know, Dan Reeves was saying that he thinks that he's probably the best blocking tight end in football that time he was going against Johnny Holloway a defensive back but I'll tell you he can put him on the back third and eight Dallas showing blitz there after Elway penalty marker down it was intended for Sewell but the flags went down everywhere I tell you, we were talking earlier how the how the uh, Cowboys use the flex, but they also use the 4-0. First down, number 54, offense, football. And they're a much better defense in the 4-0 than they are in the flex. When they get those four linemen going and those seven defensive backs and they're blitzing and all that stuff, they really cause a lot of confusion for the other team. And that's the thing that Dan Reeves was worried about yesterday. He said, we wanted to stay out of these situations. Third and 13, Bob Otto. Jim Jetcoat has moved in this setup to left defensive tackle. And Otto has moved into Randy White's into Dutton's play. Elway fires outside incomplete. Covered by Ron Fellows, intended for Clint Sampson. You know, last week, John Elway had a terrible start against New England. He said the first quarter was the worst quarter of football he ever played in his life, and he was just too up, you know, just too anxious, just too excited. And I guess they finally calmed him down. In fact, Dan Reeves said, I wish I had a gun where I could shoot him with a tranquilizer. And then he calmed down in the second half and had a great second half. Jack Will. Back in his own end zone, and Robert Levette standing at his own 45. This one he catches. Levette retreats to his own 38. But not much room to go. Brock goes down. Darren Como and Rick Dennison were the first down to make the stop, and the Cowboys will take over. Their own 48. Their first four games, the Dallas Cowboys scored over 30 points. No NFL team has ever started a season with five straight 30-point efforts. 
Of course, they have the new offensive coordinator, Neo Paul Hackett, is here now and bringing a, an offense uh, a lot like the 49er offense to this team. And the players sure like Danny White was saying last night when it works, it's a Paul Hackett offense. When it doesn't, it's a Buddy Hackett offense. That's Levent, the deep back this time, and Walker comes up. He and Newsom lined up side by side to the left. To Levent. Nothing there. Dennis Smith up to make the stop very quickly. No gain. Right now for an NFL update, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. All right, Pat, you gave the score, and here's the story. For the first time, the Cleveland Browns have won in Three Rivers Stadium. Gerald McNeil, the ice cube, took that kickoff back for 100 yards. The little 5-foot, 745-pound athlete scored the biggest touchdown, 27-24. Back to Pat and John. All right, Brent, we're at Mile High Stadium in Denver. No score. Dallas second possession of the day. In motion on second and 12. Pelour, quick pass is picked off. The flag is down back in the secondary. Dennis Smith, who just made the tackle, made the interception. This is probably going to be against the Cowboys. I'll tell you, that was a heck of an interception by Dennis Smith. He was working out there, looked like in a zone, and he just reached one of those long arms out there and brought it in. Number 16, offense, second line. So there was no play. They didn't get the playoff in time. They caught it against Pelour. So there was no play. It was still a great play by Dennis yeah, Smith. Yeah, it was. I remember Dennis Smith when he was at USC. And, uh, you know, he played a little cornerback here. And now he's a strong safety. And Dan Reeves said he thinks he, he's probably the best strong safety in football. I kind of agree with that. I mean, here is a big guy. You know, he high jumped seven foot two. I know. I mean, how do you get over something like that? Second down. And now the fans in Denver and the stands in Denver are coming alive. It's Cosby in motion. Draw play Walker hit behind the line by Andre Townsend. Watch right here. Townsend is going to take an inside move. And he gets right inside and gets the penetration. Richards doesn't get his right foot down there. Watch the outside guy. He just takes that quick inside move. You see it right there? And Richards can't get him blocked. As a tackle, you always have to protect against that inside move. See when he put that right foot back? That gave Townsend the inside lane. And that makes it third and 19. And the Cowboys go into the spread. Broncos go into their version of the four. And Pelour gets it upfield to Herschel Walker. And Walker will not have the first down. Those of you who watched the Giants defeat the St. Louis Cardinals 13 to 6. Welcome to Mile High Stadium in Denver. It's the Cowboys against the Broncos. There is no score as yet. Pat Summerall and John Madden. We're still in the first quarter. With 9-12 left to play. It's fourth down Dallas. They're at their own 49-yard line. Mike Saxon back to punt. Gerald Wilhite back deep for the Broncos, standing at his own 10. <laughs> Wilhite signals fair catch at the 10. That's where they'll start. Neither team able to get anything going offensively yet 41 yard punt no return John Elway will bring the Broncos on as you look at the head coach Dan Reeves 16 years with Tom Landry they analyzed the two the handwriting of the two in the paper this morning here in Denver and they both according to handwriting analysis are intelligent and have a tremendous desire to win that's pretty okay. handy if you're a head coach. You know, Dan Reeves is, well, of course, Tom Landry's Tom Landry. He's a legend, but Dan Reeves has done an outstanding job building this team. That's Winder. Stopped by Jeff Rohr, but a gain of about nine. You know, 
well, last night we were talking to Tom Landry. He was asking, you know, what's the best thing about this Bronco team? And Tom Landry said that they play as a team. He said, you look here or there. He said, it's not that, but it's just a great team. He said, offensively, they play well as a team. Defensively, special teams. And I think that's a real tribute to the coaching staff. It's second and one. And as you mentioned before, the Broncos do use a lot of trick plays. Here's a good spot. No tricks. Straight ahead blast by Winder gets the first down. Stopped by John Dutton and Randy White, but the first first down of the day. A gain of five. Well, I think a pretty good indicator when you're going to get a trick play is probably close to midfield when either Steve Sewell, number 30, or Gerald Wilhite, number 47, have their hands in the ball. Those are the two guys that usually handle the tricks for him. It's not the biggest team, Denver, but uh, as you pointed out, they do play as a team. And they have a lot of faith in each other and a lot of confidence in themselves. First and ten. Elway will throw on first. He's got somebody. Quint Sampson was the intended receiver. Everson Walls was chasing. He had a step. I'll tell you, he did that. He had a couple steps there on Walls, and he just threw it over his head. Yeah, we were talking about the trick plays in Denver. In four games, we see have, have used 18. Four of those have been for touchdowns. They've lost yards on four. They've gained on nine, and then they had one penalty. But remember that penalty sure. one was one that should have been a touchdown. But they fouled up the instant replay and all that stuff. So, so it, it should be five. Should be five touchdowns. Here is Wilhite. Got outside, chased and caught by Randy White. I'll tell you, there's something, a big guy, you know, big guys are usually in the pitch, you know, grunting, uh, 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 grunting. But here's a big guy that can run. Watch Randy White, 54. He's starting on a stunt to the right. Now watch, when he sees a runner, he just runs straight down the line, and he catches Will Height right there on the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you, when this guy comes to work, Randy White, he comes for a full day's work. And third and seven. Third and seven, excuse me, John. Sewell and Will Hyde are both in the game now. They operate out of the shotgun. And they get it outside to Sewell. And he's got a little room. Holloway knocked him out of bounds, but it would be a gain of 11 and another Denver first down. I think Steve Sewell is one of the guys that really helps his team because he's a running back who can also catch the ball, as he does here, coming out of the backfield, but can also play a wide receiver. So that allows Dan Reeves to do a lot of things with this offense. A guy like Steve Stuhl. Sewell, he's not listed as a starter, but he adds a heck of a lot to the team. On first down, Bob Otto has replaced Randy White, and they're looking at him over on the sideline. And Denver 38. That's a play they run over and over and over, and Jim Jeffcoat caught it from behind. Winder was the ball carrier, and he's the guy, the guy on the backside, you have to get blocked. Well, of course, you can't allow that inside penetration. You see the tight end is coming down, Kay trying to cut him, and you have to get your head in front. See, so he didn't get his head in front, and Jeff Goat just hit that gap between the tight end and the tackle. That'll make it second and 12. Sampson comes out to the right. Watson goes wide to the left from the spread formation. The back's crossed. Elway gets it out to Sewell. And Otto chases it down with help from Vince Albritton, but they still got nine yards. That they did. They had their center out there, Billy Bryan, who's one of the best in the league. You know, he can do a heck of a lot of things. And they get their center out there. They get a one-man screen. See the center start there? He goes down to the right of the screen. Elway looks right. Boom, he hits a pass. See, now he has a blocker out in front. He gets out, Britain, and, and that's the play. That block allowed about five more yards. That'll make it third and two. The Broncos moving now up to their own 45. No score as yet. 5-12 left to play, first quarter. Elway rolls out, gets out of the pocket. Back across the field and Kenneth Sewell. That's one of the things that he can do that no one else can do. 
John Elway. Yes. He's so strong, you know, that uh, Gordon Banks, who played with uh, Elway and Stanford, said that no one wanted to play catch with him. He said he used to throw the ball in practice and break guys' fingers. There goes Randy White walking up uh, the tunnel into the Cowboy locker room. The only thing strange about that, he was walking by himself. They usually send someone in with them, a trainer or a doctor or that type of thing. Will back to punt. And LeVette standing back at about the 11 yard line. Let's go! Let's go, buddy! Another one off the inside of his foot that LeVette picks up to handle. Or tries to. It bounces away from him, and the Broncos down it inside the 20 yard line. 34 yard punt. And the word on Randy White is that he has a strained left hamstring. He must have pulled it on the play when he ran the defense, the Denver back down. Running down the line of scrimmage. Right. Yeah, but I, I mean, to me, it's still strange that he walked in there into the house by himself. We know that really has to hurt the Cowboys. Of course, Randy White, one of the best ones in the league. But they also have Don Smirik who is out and Kevin Brooks out. So it's going to fall on the shoulders, it would seem, of Bob Otto. Robert Levette is the deep back. Walker is lined up in the slot to the left. And Levette will come left and won't go very far. Steve Wilson up to make the stop and a loss of four. Those of you who watched the Eagles come on to win their second and shut out Atlanta and in their unbeaten streak, 16 to nothing, welcome to Mile High Stadium in Denver. The home of the Broncos. No score here. Dallas nothing. Denver nothing with 420 left to play. 420 now left to play in the first quarter. Hey, those people who were popping off about Buddy Ryan are scrambling yeah. around to make some excuses, aren't they? Second down and 14. Cowboys have a minus eight yards total so far. Palor back to throw. Chase hits. Gordon Banks, it looks like it's about a yard shy of the first down. Lewis Wright on the stop. I tell you, Banks has really come along on this team. You know, he said when he first came, he was trying too hard to make the team, and he started catching the ball with his body. And he said then he relaxed, he started catching with his hands. He said he's feeling, he's finally feeling comfortable as a cowboy. Third and one. They're feeling comfortable with him, I know that. Third and about a foot, really. Ball just inside the 30. Walker and Newsom are the two deep backs. Mosby in motion. Now the other way. Now to Walker. First down, Cowboys, they're first. Tony Lilly came up to make the stop. Raiders finally beat Kansas City in Kansas City. You know, there's a guy that's amazing to me. I mean, I think everyone knew he was a runner, and I think they expected him just to be a, a runner in the NFL. But the thing, you know, they play him at fullback, halfback, wide receiver. Last week, he played at tight end and caught one wide open in the end zone. And the fact that they have that much confidence in him to try those many things with him. He is playing now at wide receiver, right up at the top of your picture. That's Walker in motion. He's running in reverse this time with some blockers. Walker for about nine on the reverse. Tell you what, he doesn't look like he should be able to run that fast. No, he's too big, and his shoulder pads are too big. I mean, it, you know, a guy who runs that fast ought to be like a little guy. You know, little skinny old legs and arms, but look at how wide that guy is. There's a guy who's taking his place. Tony Dorsett says he's not going to play today. He said he's just going to be a cheerleader and a model. Well, he's working at both. Second and short, Valora. Again under pressure. I don't know if he got it or not. He lost the ball out of bounds. 
but I think he was out of bounds. He's about an inch short, it would appear, to Brent Musburger in New York now. Well, Pat, now they're only three unbeatens. You've got one of them. I'll tell you, Buddy Ryan's defense did a job. Seven sacks of David Archer. Next for the Eagles will be the New York Giants, and Buddy Ryan's doing a job. Let's go back to Pat and John. Well, both the defenses here in Denver are doing the job. We're a minute 42 left in the first quarter. No scorers yet. Nobody able to move very much. Pelour looked to be a little bit short of the first down. I tell you, you have to admire the fact that he went for it, but again, that's being a young quarterback. I don't know that you want to take on those defenders when you're running up the sideline like that. Especially if you're regular. Danny White is already hurt. And if you want a long career, or any career, There's our head cheerleader. He was trying to get a first down. I think Tony Dorsett was cheering for him to get out of bounds and not get hurt. I'll tell you, you know, talking about it, Tony Dorsett, there's no one I've always felt better at avoiding that direct flush contact than Tony Dorsett. He always made you kind of miss and just skim him when you hit him. If things progress as they have been progressing, he should be back next week when they face the Redskins. The lure over the top got his first down. You know, that's a pretty good play in short yardage because you always teach the defensive linemen get low. And they want to get, you see how low those linemen are? Look how low they get. They're all going down, grabbing grass. Then if they're all going down, grabbing grass, and there's no linebacker right there, then the best thing to do is, boom, just jump up on over it. Tony Hill is split wide to the left. Mike Sherrard is the wide receiver on the other side. This is Walker. Penalty marker down over here on the left side. Jim Ryan made the stop, a gain of one by Herschel. Jerry Mark Bright, the referee. Illegal motion, number 80, offense, penalty decline, second down. Tony Hill, they decline the penalty. Bring up a second and nine situation. Dallas has the ball, their own 46, no score. Carl Mecklenburg, who goes everywhere, does everything. Doesn't look like he should be able to do it either, but he does. Hill and Sherrard split wide to the left. Or moves Newsom. Goes Whitson. Or Sherrard, and he's got it. Inside the Bronco 15. I'll tell you, that was a heck of a catch because Randy Robbins was right there with him. Watch your ride. He's the rookie number one draft choice for the Cowboys. Missed most of training camp. Watch him. They're running step for step. Now, Sherrod just starts to fade a little to the left, and Poulard made a perfect pass. You want to get it over the outside shoulder, away from the help. He just barely got it off. I think he does have poise. I mean, he stood in there and hung in there under that big rush and made a perfect pass. Look at that. That's the place you want to throw it, over the outside shoulder, away from the safety. So that's the end of the first quarter. They'll change ends now. No score as yet, but Dallas down on the Bronco 12, and they'll have it first and 10 at that point. Green Bay, Wisconsin, 20 below. The last place you'd want to be with the cold. 
unless you're the Green Bay Packer backers. So we asked them to try Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. That stuff just cleared off my head. You should have found it a long time ago. Got rid of my aches and pains. Try it up my runny nose. And Alka-Seltzer Plus, that's all I ever needed. Eight of every ten Packer backers who tried it switched to Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. Fast, effective relief for tough winter colds. My dander shampoo is good. Maybe you should try something else. My dandruff shampoo really works. Maybe you should try something else, like Selsun Blue. Doctors and pharmacists recommend Selsun Blue more than all other leading brands combined. What that means to you is no leading brand gets rid of dandruff better than Selsun Blue. It's number one. And like all Selsun Blue formulas, new extra medicated Selsun Blue is for serious dandruff with the ingredients recommended most by doctors. You know, here's Sherrard right here. We'll see him now. It's man-to-man -man here, but here's the guy that is watching Herschel Walker, and that allows Sherrard to get in behind him. Now, watch what happened. The man-to-man -man there, they expect safety help in the middle. You see the safety right there? He's watching Herschel Walker. And now, here's the safety here, so Sherrard can get by here, and the ball's thrown there. See that? You have to do something. If you're going to throw the ball in the middle deep, you have to get something to hold the free safety. Walker and Newsom. It's the first play of the second quarter. Hand off to Newsom. Newsom maybe got to the 10. Met by Tom Jackson. Pickup of two, perhaps. You know, an interesting thing, Pat, that the Cowboys have really done well this year. Is it inside the 20? Oh, here it is right there. They've been there 17 times. They've scored 17 and 14 touchdowns. That's good football. But I'll tell you another thing. The Bronco defense, Joe Collier, their coordinator, is the best at football playing inside the 20. They are tough down here. Second and eight. Valor rolls right. Gets it outside the pants. Pants maybe got to the four. A pickup of six. Randy Robbins on the stop. I tell you, the closer you get to the goal line, the tougher this Bronco defense is. Yeah, they were talking about Fuller having the poise. I mean, he started this game, he came out throwing, and he's been throwing the whole time. He's five out of seven now. There's Danny White. Mike Renfro is down in the game as well. There is Steve Fuller. Mike Renfro is split wide to the right. Walker is the only back behind Pelour. He's going to throw. It is picked off by Lewis Wright. He's still on his feet. Still on his feet. Still. And finally down. In Dallas territory, a 57-yard return. Listen to the crowd. I said the closer you get to the goal line, the tougher this guy is, the tougher this defense is. I've always felt Louis Wright was one of the best corners in football. When I was coaching, there's three guys that I'd never mess with. Louis Wright was one, Mel Blunt was the other, and Emmett Thomas was the other. Jay Johnny got a great block down at about the 10 yard line by Steve Wilson. It really is what's springing. Tell you one thing, I think if I'm going to throw down there, I'm surprised the Cowboys threw because they could have gotten the first down. But if I'm going to, the one guy I'm not going to throw on is Louis Wright. First and 10, Denver. Here at the Cowboys 43 yard line. Sewell is the man in motion. And they throw it back to Winder. Shoved out of bounds by Ron Fellows and Jeff Rohr. A gain of five, nevertheless, Steve Pelour. The rest of the Cowboys on the sideline lending some encouragement. Well, that, of course, that, that, that's the time a, a young quarterback needs encouragement. You don't need all the pats on the backs when you throw the touchdowns. You need them when you throw the interception. Word on Randy White is that he will not be back <laughs> in this half. 
maybe in the second half. We don't know yet. Second and five. Sewell split wide right. K is the movement. Pitch is again back to Winder. And this time, Tutar Jones had him and lost him. Bill Bates came up to finish things off. A gain of two. I was watching Clarence K on that thing block, and Dan Reeves was saying, he said, I don't know what it is. He said, but blockers just can't get off a K. And I was watching him that time, and the blocker couldn't get off a K. And he said, and I don't think he holds much either. Been called for holding only one time. Watson comes wide to the left. Sampson is wide right. Jackson also in the game to the left. Elway wants him to come and talk to him. Elway out of the pocket. Chase finally finds a man open. It's Will Height. Everson Walls on the stop. What a gain of 12 on a Denver first down. I think that play, sometimes it looks like it's not designed. I think this is designed. They start here in the shotgun. I know it's designed. You see, they pull the lineman out. Then he runs out to the left. Then he comes back to the right all the time, looking for guys open. Then he finds Gerald Wilhite all by himself. But I think that's what they want to do. They want to get him in a shotgun, get him back there, run this defensive line, tire him out, and, of course, still get guys open. They have it first and 10 at the 25. They start Sewell in motion. Winder again. Winder down the sideline, knocked out of bounds by Bates. But he got eight. You know, that's not a bad play. Watch Clarence K here on the end of the line of scrimmage. You see him block Hegman? You see him get to him, get to him, stay with him, stay with him? You see how he can't get off him? He's still blocking him. Look, he's still there. And that's excited, of course, to wind to win two and got outside of that thing. Got his eight yards. And that's a tough block, though. To block a linebacker, you tell the halfback it's all the way outside of you. Second and one and a half. Sewell of in, the man in motion. Winder again, the ball carrier. He got a first down. Stopped by Bob Otto. That's not a bad time to run the sweep. It looks like Sammy Winder's getting a little tired, too. He, he raised the hand to come out. But, you know, you run those guys when the quarterback's scrambling. Then you give the ball to the halfback around the end, and you run them again. First and 10 at the 13. Broncos have it. No score as yet. The Cowboys were down close. The interception and the 57-yard return Gave it back to Denver. They hand straight ahead. Ken Bell, the ball carrier. He gets down about the 10. A gain of three. Broncos, one thing that Dan Reeves has done that I think really helps him a lot is he gets everybody involved in the pictures you said the other day everybody's going to get a letter this year yeah and they all have a thing you know, I mean, two tight ends three wide receivers the running backs everyone has to be ready to play second and seven it's winder again spins and he is hit by john dutton while he was spinning and felt it backwards he still got about a yard but he was really popped by dutton yeah I, i've never been much of a spinner but i imagine That'd be the worst thing that could happen to you coming out of the spin. Watch the right side of the line here. Elway made a little block there on down. But watch, how would that be? You just come out of your spin, and crap, there's a big number 78 staring you in the face. That might affect your memory. You see Elway make a block? Yeah, Downs yeah. came on a blitz, and Elway blocked him. Third and six, Sewell in motion. Elway, they pick it up. Got Will Hyde in the end zone. Touchdown, Denver.
Bills will try the extra point. Kubiak, the Broncos' backup quarterback, is the holder. Carlos is good. Watch how cool Elway is. He does the whole thing. He puts Sewell in motion, brings him back, looks out there. Elway, boom! He finds Will Height, and he really zipped that thing in there. Hello, I'm Leona, your automatic teller. Can I help you with a student loan? No car loan, Leona. Thanks, Father. Home improvement loan. Hey. An auto loan? It's a General Motors car. Between beats, state your name, address, social security number, present, and three prior employers between beats. Uh, Charles Krauss, 21, 28 cents. Begin again. Charles Krauss. No, Charles Krauss. Begin again. Charles Krauss. Don't get hassled when you finance a new car or truck at GMAC Financing. Only at your GM dealer. Uh, is there someone live I could talk with around? Do we have one of our calendars? This is a fine calendar. We also have what they call a pretty calendar. If I can only find it, only. Why is my antacid Tums? Tums is effective. It neutralizes one third more stomach acid than the other leading brand. And Tums is rich in calcium. To me, that's extra good news. Tums, 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 Tums. Begin with raw steel. Shape it with fire, muscle, and sweat. Polish it to razor sharp perfection. We're looking for a few good men with a medal to be Marines. That's the situation. Denver leading 7-0 with 9.38 left to play in the first half. The scoring drive, the Broncos kept at eight plays, went 43 yards, and then Elway threw a nine-yard touchdown pass to Will Height. Rich Carlos will kick off. Daryl Black and Robert Levette, number 29, back for the Cowboys. Here's Carlos' kick. It's a dandy. Pinned him in the corner. He slipped at Levette. He's knocked out of bounds at the 15-yard line. 7-0 Denver in the second quarter with nine and a half minutes left to play in the first half. The Broncos on top. at Allstate homeowners insurance rates lately? Nope. They may be lower than you think. They are low. Leave it to the good hands people. Leave it to the good hands people. Bring your policy into Allstate and compare. See how low our rates really are. Leave it to the good hands people. They're low. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Michigan Wolverines, a team of explosive dimensions. But can they control the one-man explosion of Heisman Hope Lorenzo White next Saturday on CBS Sports? With John Madden, Pat Summerall, we're at Mile High Stadium in Denver. The Cowboys this year have been slow out of the gate in spite of all the points they've scored. But first and third quarter, 
Minus five in the turnover ratio. Now that's minus six. And they haven't helped their point situation. In the second and fourth, it's been considerably better. Banks and Newsom are wide to the right. Walker, the lone setback. Back to Walker. This guy, watch him. He's going to come in a blitz. 77. Right behind Rulon Jones. You see, he sneaks up, sneaks up, sneaks up. Boom, the ball's hit. He hits that gap. That allows the penetration. No one blocks him. And Herschel Walker doesn't have a chance. Dan Reese, that's what they wanted to do. Get Walker in the backfield before he got started running. Loss of five, make it second and 15. Malora takes the throw. Throws the ground. Doug Cosby, I think, was the intended receiver. He was, but he was surrounded by four guys. That was lucky. That was a, a one hopper. Because had not, that, that, that would have been an interception. You know, the way they play this offense under Paul Hackett is they have three reads. One, two, three. Now, it looked like Cosby was the number one read, but there were four orange jerseys around the read. You better take your reading somewhere else. I'd go to number two or three. Floor, a deafening roar. For a safety. And there's a penalty marker down anyway. to testify Magnum on CBS. For his enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Mr. Bob Lilly. It was the greatest day of my life, the ultimate honor. After a career of 14 years as a Dallas Cowboy, being enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But there was one person who wasn't there to share that moment, and that was my dad. From the time I was five years old, he worked with me. His dream for me was that someday I'd play in the NFL. He couldn't run because he was partially crippled, but he passed the ball to me. He worked with me every day. Over the years, he was my coach and my greatest fan. He never missed a game until he passed away in 1971. That was the year the Cowboys made it to the Super Bowl for the first time. When you visit the Pro Football Hall of Fame, you'll see number 74, Mr. Cowboy, Bob Lilly. Behind every number, there's a story and a dream that came true. The Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Don't miss it. This message furnished by the National Football League. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Michelob. Exceptionally smooth, distinctive taste is why the night belongs to Michelob. GMAC, the financial services people from General Motors. And by Allstate, for home, auto, business, health, and life. You're in good hands with Allstate. Denver 9, Dallas nothing, second quarter. Of course, the safety, you get two points for the defense. Now the offense gets the free kick. So they have to kick from their 20. They can use any kind of kick, and of course, it's usually the punter, as it is in this case. 
So you get the double dipper on defense, you get the two, plus you're going to get the ball back in good field position. And it's going to be Will Hyde at his 20. To about the 42. Tripped up by Todd Fowler. 60-yard kick by Saxon. A return of 22, so it nets 38. The Broncos will take over, leading 9 to nothing. Charlie, give me a light. Charlie, a Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Uh, Bud Light. Hey, thanks. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. I can have a light. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Time to play! McDonald's NFL! Kick off, pay off! Oh, good! You collect these cards with your favorite NFL stars. Oh, like him? Every kickoff payoff card is a winner. Win great McDonald's food prizes. Winning cards must be redeemed by the following week. So hurry into McDonald's. New winners every week at McDonald's! Rub off your kickoff payoff coupon and win great McDonald's food prizes. Then hurry back to redeem your coupon and collect more. NFL kickoff payoff. Every card's a winner. Late one night, when all the families and all the houses all across the land were fast asleep, all of their old family cars were taken away. In their places were left shiny new Honda Accords. And they all drove happily ever after. Honda. Wednesday on CBS, the season premiere of The Equalizer. He's back in full force, and no one can stop him. Nothing. Denver needs elites Dallas with 8.31 left to play in the first half. Randy White, as you know, was hurt earlier. Mark Tuine has taken his place now. Bob Otto had been playing there, but now it's Tuine. Winder and Will Height behind Elway. Sewell in motion again. Will Height stopped and read it and cut it back for four. Ed Jones came from the other side. You know, the interesting thing, two and a was the offensive player, just moved to defense. Now watch, he comes in here, and they're going to double him. Watch a left guard and Bill Bryan, the center, come out. Look, Bishop and, and Bryan are just riding him down, riding him down. That was planned for Randy White. They planned on doubling Randy White. Now Mark Tuane comes in, just moved over from offense. They say, what? I got to take what they had planned for White? Actually, he didn't do a bad job. Oh, taking on a deuce. Second and six. No way. Hit by Eugene Lockhart was Sammy Winder. You know, here's what they do in the Polaroid. You see how the Polaroid helped? Is they're looking at the Polaroid on the sidelines now, and they're explaining the coverage. You see, you can take a Polaroid before the ball snap, or you can take it after. So they're showing where they are when you're ready to throw the ball. That, that was the Broncos' sideline. That's the defensive side of it. They got the whole list of everything that the Cowboys have done. They got all their Polaroids there so they can study every situation. They're in the seven, all the way out of the shotgun. In the pocket, now flush out of the pocket, and now going deep and has. Jackson. What a throw by John Elway. 50 yards. Elway to Jackson. That's not even a great quarterback throw, Pat. That's a Superman throw. I don't know that there's anyone else in the NFL that makes this throw. Samson runs an out. Mark Jackson runs an out, then an up. But Elway scrambling around, running, hit that thing on the run. Watch this one. He starts out here. Now he can't find anything. Now he starts to scramble. But look at that, how he threw that ball that far, over 50 yards, and hit him right on the run. That is an amazing football play. He 
comes through while on one leg. First and goal. Will height jams down close to the goal line. Steve Diossi finally tripped him up, but he's down to about the one. Second and goal at the one. Look at these fans. They shake the place, man. They love this team. Okay, these fans make more noise than any fans in the National Football League. I know it from having been in the <laughs> sideline over there. They didn't like you here. No, no, no. Hey. <laughs> Second down. They need a yard for a touchdown. They give it to Will Height. Airborne and touchdown. investment firm is only as impressive as it is responsive. It's a go. So when interest rates fell, we looked for new ways for our clients to make money and develop unique opportunities like the Prudential Real Estate Investment Trust, a first of its kind in a way to take advantage of changing markets. While others may imitate it, we're busy surpassing it. If anyone can show you bold new thinking in the business of making money, let's close it. It's Prudential Beach, rock solid, market wise. Figures are one thing, but the best way to judge a Honda Prelude SI is by the seat of your pants. If you just ask for a light, give me a light. You never know what you'll get. <laughs> Bugs. <laughs> no, actually, uh, Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, ask for Bud Light. Yours? No. Because everything else... Give me a light. Showtime! It's just a light. The firepower of Washington's Jay Schrader. The horsepower of Dallas's Herschel Walker. It all starts with the NFL Today, next Sunday on CBS Sports. It has been a Denver explosion. Crowds are now exploding. 16 to nothing. The Broncos lead the Cowboys. Robert Lovett standing back deep, along with Daryl Clack, number 42, for Dallas. Harless, a high kick. Lovett from two yards deep in the end zone. No place to go. He fell down at about the 13. Let's watch that touchdown again, or not the touchdown, but the big play to Mark Jackson. Now watch what happens. We'll do it here in a two-part. We'll see the, the snap. They're in the spread formation. Now Elway goes back here. Now we're going to stop it right here. See, he doesn't have anything open here. He doesn't have anything open here. Right now he has nothing open. So he has to buy some time. So now he starts to run out to the right. He finds Jackson out here. If we stop it here, and we'll see that right here he has a step, and then he decides to throw him the big one. In the meantime, the Cowboys have gotten nothing underway. The handoff is to Herschel Walker. Walker around the outside. Penalty marker down. Tony Lilly, who played against Walker in college many, many times, came up to make the tackle. It'll be a holding 
penalty against the Cowboys. They're going nowhere fast. I'll tell you, this Bronco defense is one of those overall Finish. swarmers. Number 70, offense, first down. And when they get you going backwards, they can keep you going backwards. And they are hungry. We're at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Pat Summerall with John Madden. It is sold out for the 120th consecutive time in regular season. Over 75,000 on hand. And they love the Broncos. First and 18, the Cowboys back at their own seven. Hand off Walker behind Richards, and he's caught from behind by Jackson. Mecklenburg here. If we can see this, watch him. He started outside, shifted up in the tight end, plays off Cosby, holds him, plays off the guard pulling, stacks the whole thing up, gets the pile going backward. I'll tell you, Carl Mecklenburg is one of the most dominant defensive players in the National Football League. It's interesting that we were talking to some of the Bronco officials yesterday, and they were saying he doesn't look like he should be that strong. Can't do those things. He doesn't have those big arms and stuff, but he bench presses over 400 pounds. Lord back in the end zone, chased again by Rulon Jones. And they say his arm was, was going forward. That was very nearly another safety. I think his arm was going forward. Question, uh, but the question I would ask is, who was he throwing it to? Is there anyone there other than his right tackle? No one. I don't one. think so. I think, I think that should have been illegal grounding. That should have been a safety. Cooper, the right tackle. And he sure as heck didn't want it. No. It's regroup time for Tom Landry and troops. Over with Danny White, Steve Pelour, the quarterback. He'll operate out of the spread. They start rocking the stands again. Third down at 16 from the nine. Screen pass to Walker. for the first down and Mecklenburg and Jones are the first two there again. You know this stadium has to be well built. Bet when they add them up, all, uh, when they add everything up today, that this will be the the largest attendance in Denver Bronco history. Tickets were tough to come by, to say the least. And they don't have any no shows in this place. Saxon's kick by Will Height at his 45, straight ahead. Hit by Diossi and tripped up there after he gets into Dallas territory. 40-yard punt by Saxon. Eight-yard return. 3.59 left to play in the first half. Broncos, 16-0. Surprise! The fuel injected CRXSI. There are lots of furnaces you can choose for your home. But for the most efficient energy, forget all but the gas furnaces. And to cut energy costs further, consider only the high efficiency gas furnaces. Of those, only one has advanced pulse technology the Lennox Pulse Furnace. It will make your heating more efficient. Take it from Dave Lennox. You can save a lot of gas with a pulse. Atta boy, Dave! Gas, America's best energy value. Give me a light. That's not correct, Steve. Don't just ask for a light beer. Come on, give me a light. You asked for it, Steve. Yes, Steve, Bud Light, the light beer with the first name and taste. 
Don't just ask for a light. Bud Light, because everything else isn't just a light, Steve. Don't forget next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern, CBS Sports presents college football. Most of you will see Heisman Trophy hopeful Lorenzo White. And Michigan State take on Bo Schimbeckler's explosive and fourth-ranked Michigan Wolverines. Or you'll see a battle for Pac-10 supremacy between Arizona and UCLA. Next Saturday on CBS, downtown Denver. And the weather, there was some threats of storms and things as we came here for this weekend, but it's been just perfect. First down, Broncos at the Cowboy 47. Sewell again in motion. Look out, look out. Intended for Watson and broken up. Michael Downs and Bates back there with him. I'll tell you, it looked like Downs got there a little early. take the Polaroid. We, we were looking at the coaches taking the Polaroid. They take the Polaroids up there, then they run them down to the sideline. Watch the coaches there to their reaction. They're saying they had it, because they call it from up there. They know it's coming. They say, we got them, we got them. Now you don't got them, but they think that they got interference. They think that number 26 hits the receiver before he gets there. Second and ten, Elway starts to his left, throws the shovel pass, almost picked off by Jim Jeffcoat in the air. I'll tell you, that's an old cowboy play. I'll bet you that these guys were working against that. Last week, Denver used this play three times in the first half alone. Now, Jeffcoat, I'm sure, is looking for it. You see him? He kind of came there. He saw Elway. Then he could see Will Height coming inside, so he went to get in between. He's saying, I know it. You know, Ernie told me about that all week. Shades of Preston Pearson. Well, that would have been a big one. And he picked that off and rumbled into the end zone. Elway out of the sprint formation again on third and ten. They're retreating. Has some time and has Everson Walls close to Steve Watson. And the Broncos will have to punt. You know, a strong-arm quarterback like a John Elway here has so much confidence that he thinks he can get that thing in there anyway. You know, and there was about three guys around Watson, and he still tried to zero it in or zoom it in or shoot it in or zip it in. If anybody had been hit by that ball, it would have hurt. Oh, he threw one yesterday in practice to stutter. They were uh, practicing a tackle eligible. <laughs> so it zoomed by his head and went about 50 yards and stuttered. Right. Back the, what in the heck was that? We, Will back to punt. And LeVette back deep for Dallas at his own 10. Heading for the sideline. And out of bounds at about the 18, it seems. Make it the 20-yard line. So... With 3.37 left to play in the first half, the Cowboys have it. First and 10, trailing 16-0. They say there is no way to wrap chicken so it won't leak. Can't be done. Too complicated. That's the way it goes. But Goodyear said, Clean up your act. And found a way to print an adhesive in just the right spot on the plastic wrap to seal it properly and easily and leak proof it completely. See what you can do when you don't give a crap about what they say? Good year. You'd no more settle for a flake in your hair than a spot on your tie. You. You pass the test to good grooming. Has the look of success. Your head and shoulders above the rest. One flake can mean dandruff. Regular shampoos may rinse flakes, but head and shoulders protection goes to the source to help stop flakes. And that's doing it right. Your head and shoulders above the rest. Why go to some fast food place that serves dried out chicken? When you can go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, they always have fresh, juicy chicken. And that secret blend of 11 herbs and spices makes it taste delicious. Finger licking 
looking good. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, all we do is chicken, so we do it right. Anyone else's chicken may be left high and dry. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. That, of course, is Randy White back in front of the Dallas bench. They said he would not play again in the second half. They weren't sure about, I mean, the first half. We're not sure about the second half. Dallas' first five possessions. Punt, punt, interception, safety, and punt. They have total minus one yard on offense in the second quarter. And Herschel Walker's carried the ball six times for eight yards. Walker is now behind for the run. of Sherrard but that Denver defense is like nobody is trying to block them. I know they are but it doesn't look like it. I'll tell you what they do on that is they're coming here Hunley the inside linebacker there they bring him up there and Pelour just had to get rid of that ball but watch the rush from his right side. Here comes Hunley straight up the middle. They don't get him blocked. Moore just had to get rid of that ball to avoid taking the sack. The receiver had no time to make any sort of an adjustment. Moore fakes to Walker. This time he had some time and he gets Tony Hill. It's amazing what you can do if they're not looking at your eyes. You know, Steve Pelour had only thrown eight balls in the in the National Football League. I mean, that had been the extent of his career so far. So all that they knew about him since he's been with the Cowboys is how he's done in practice. And of course, you say in practice, you have protection. And, uh, you know, it's unfair to evaluate anyway, anyone, the rush that he's been getting. Walker is lined up this time in the slot as Pelour goes back to throw, and again he has some time. And he gets it out to Newsom. Newsom belted out of bounds by Ricky Hunley after a gain of maybe four. Call it two. You know, in the last game, they seemed to feature Herschel Walker a lot, you know, putting him at different positions, but getting the ball to him. Today, they don't seem to be doing that as much. They seem to be spreading it around the receivers, the tight end, to Newsom and so on. And, and, they, and they haven't been getting the ball to Walker. Second and eight. The line of scrimmage is at Dallas 33. Now they want Walker to move. Now Cosby's the man who moves. And now they come out of it. And they shouldn't have. Flags are down everywhere as Cosby is not got a bounds at about the first nine, first down marker by Randy Robbins. But they were confused on offense. They didn't blow the whistle before they even got the ball started. Look at this. They're talking there. Newsom is telling Herschel Walker to go to the other side. Walker says, what? Now I'll just stay here. Then Cosby's in motion. Now where do I go? That wasn't the illegal motion there. That was all right. Illegal motion. Number 34. Offense. Second down. Well, they said it was. Yeah, but that's wrong. He wasn't doing anything. The only thing they can say is after he got set that he has to set for a second. And I think he was. Yeah, that looked okay to me. I mean, that didn't look like it was confusion, but it didn't look like a penalty type of confusion. See, here it is. Now, now, now he moves here. Now, if he's set for a second, it's okay. I don't know. They're just going to pick him. Second and 13 from the 28. Forward handoff this time to Walker. Walker gets to about the 36. Stopped by Mecklenburg again. You know, when that Mecklenburg comes out of a game, he usually has some rushes and sacks and knockdowns and tips and tack. I mean, his defensive chart looks like a basketball player or something. Actually, you know, John, that seems to be sort of uh, something uh, that's evolving in football with what the Raiders do with Howie Long and now what they do with Mecklenburg, you have a you have a good player like that, and you keep moving him around, give him a new look. Yeah, remember the Giants did that with Lawrence Taylor. Yeah. Third down. Delore has it almost picked off, almost by Randy Robbins. 
But he was throwing while he was leaning backwards. Look at Doug Cosby here. He's going down to talk to that deep official way down the field, telling him he was he was hell. There's a real veteran. He knows the official who keys the tight end. Cosby went down there and said, hey, he held me the whole play. And they've just gotten the two minute warning and the Broncos lead it 16 to nothing. This fabulous official NFL travel bag, complete with your team's emblem and colors, can be yours free. It's yours when you buy 10 rolls or more of energy-saving Owens Corning insulation. Who has transformed home entertainment, bringing sight and sound together with one remote. Who RCA with digital command component systems, a choice of components operated by one remote that deliver a sight and sound experience you must experience. Digital command component systems. If you settle for less than RCA, that's exactly what you'll get. Fixing this water damage will cost $1,200. Could I have prevented it? You could with Thompson's water seal. This water damage is going to run $750. What would have stopped it? Prevent water damage with Thompson's water seal. Simply brush Thompson's on wood, brick, or concrete, and it penetrates to form a barrier water can't get past, even when driven by 98-mile-per-hour winds. This time, I'm going to protect my new deck with Thompson's water seal, a great defense against repair expense. Here's Doug Cosby, who was complaining just a minute ago. Here's why. Look what he's talking about. Here's Cosby here. He's going to make a move, and he gets held just coming out of the move. Watch him near. See, he's moving it in. Then he's going to pivot out. Now, watch the hole right there. The grab, that throws him just off enough so that he can't get outside. That was Randy Robbins, number 48, holding him. And watch Cosby's reaction. Here's Saxon back to punt. Will Hyde back deep for Denver. That one will stay up there a while. Will Hyde signals fair catch and gets on the ground at about the 20. Broncos will take over with a minute 50 left to play in the first half, and they are shutting out the Cowboys 16 0. 44 yard punt by Saxon, no return. Steve Pelour. Over on the sideline. And I'm telling you, he's talking to Paul Hackett now, and they're talking about either what just went on or what they expect to go on the next time they get the ball. You know, he looks a lot like Elway, doesn't he? I mean, he does. They look like they could be twin brothers. Sewell in motion. Winder. Field for a Denver first down. Two and eight tripped him up, but he picked up 11. I tell you, this this offensive line of the Broncos has really done a good job. Watch number 70 stuttered there. He gets Jeff Goat to the inside. Brian comes down. They get good movement there. Then Brian comes off. He comes off his block, makes another block in a kick out, and Winder runs off that. That's a a hustling group of guys that work there. They're not. As we said earlier, they're not the biggest offensive line, but they really work well together as a group. Denver took this time out, so they have two left. Coming up at halftime, of course, Brent Musburger and Dick Vermeil with scores and highlights from around the league. Also, Irv Cross will have a live report from the field here at Mile High Stadium. That's all coming up at the half on the NFL today. There have been some rather shocking scores today. Philadelphia shut out Atlanta. Anytime uh, it is nice and cool. Mountains and perhaps some showers over in the background. We know what they always say about Denver. If you don't like the, re the weather, hang around a while. It'll change, and it's in the process of it. Here's Elway again rolling out of the pocket. Got a man deep and wide open. 
Lance Sampson looked over the outside shoulder, the one closest to the sideline, and Elway led him to the inside. And I'll tell you, the Cowboys were lucky on that because their corner who was covering Sampson was Ron Fellows, and he fell down. Watch this. He was wide open. Watch him coming off the line here. Now watch right there as he went on a stop and go. Fellow slipped and fell down. Boy, that was something. And Samson went by. Sam Elway knew he should have had that one. When you get a guy, when the corner falls down and there's no one out there but your guy and it's not a touchdown. All you can do is hold your head. Or hit your head. Give it a double slapper. Second down, here's Elway retreating again. Now he comes out of the pocket and he's got a lot of room. Elway out of bounds midfield. Again, a scramble of 19 yards. What a day he's having. You know, Elway is not only a nimble quarterback and a good runner, but he's a strong guy. Watch this as the rush is coming in. There's one of the defenders right there. You see him right there. He has a hold of him. Elway is big enough to run through that type of thing. That, that's the way Terry Bradshaw was. You know, some quarterbacks, they're like paper. You know, you just put a hand out there and boom, they go right down. But he just ran right through Bob Otto on that play, put his hand out. Elway went whack right through the hand. They stopped the clock with a minute 21 left to play. Now Otto jumps off sides. Elway's going to run through with the play. Now the Cowboys are going to chase him out of bounds. But that play will be called back. Victor Scott. Otto jumped before the ball was snapped. Well, poor Otto, you know, when you, you know, you get in there and you're taking Randy White's place and they're double teaming you and you finally get through on a rush and the guy Outside. runs away from your rush. Number 76, defense, first down. All you can do is jump offside. <laughs> pretty good balance, pretty much what Dan Reeves wanted. 19 times they ran with it, 13 times he's thrown it. Well, of course, they've had success with that running. You know, Sammy Winder is a good runner, and he's made some big plays on sweeps and off tackles. Good line block. Elway back to throw. As his man Clint Sampson out of bounds. They're throwing a penalty down right. there, Pat. They're saying, I think, that he hit him after he was out of bounds. That's they're talking about Bill Bates, number 40. There's Sampson, perfect throw. He's out of bounds. Bates gives him that right arm, and it's going to cost the Cowboys 15 extra yards. And put Rich Carlos down even closer to field goal range. Is still, still over talking to the effect. I guess you could call that talking. Well, you said he couldn't pull up. You know, you, a guy like Bates, who is so aggressive, when he runs that far, at the end of a long run, you expect to hit somebody. You, yeah, you want some contact. You don't want to run 40 yards and no contact. If you did that, you'd be a track man. It's first and 10 at the 12, then. Rush and Elway fires down the middle to Winder. I beg your pardon to Will Height. He's got it. His penalty marker down on the other side of the field. Well, John Dutton was in it there. I think Billy Bryan and Keith Bishop. Dutton. Dutton's about a foot taller than Bryan. See what the flag is about. Number 25, defense. First down. Those guys are just talking there. There's no penalty there. That wasn't a penalty. But that's what goes on in those pits. The penalty took place in the secondary. I think it was against Everson Walls. Against Steve Watson. Automatic first down and first and goal at the eighth. Well, I'll tell you, the Broncos have a good move going here, but. About 20 yards of those were penalties. 
Just over a minute left to play in the first half. The Broncos have two timeouts left. Sewell in motion. This is Wender inside the five to about the three. Eugene Lockhart. It might be the four. Jeff Rohr also on the stop. Broncos take a timeout. And they have now one left. Pretty even in the first quarter, but the Broncos have really dominated things. Interception set it up. You know, the Broncos are dominating here the way the Chicago Bears dominate. And I'll tell you, of all the teams I've seen, this looks like the best AFC team. Of course, we saw the Bears last week against Cincinnati, and they looked like the Bears of old. And I mean, you don't have to pick people that are going to be there at the end or anything, but right now, from what I've seen, I think the Broncos and the Bears look like the two best teams in the NFL. Best that we've seen. I don't think there's much doubt about that. We haven't seen them all. Next week, we'll see another good team, the Washington Redskins, against these Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. You know, the Redskins remind me a lot of, of Denver. That, you know, you don't say who's the guy or just one or two guys. It's kind of a team thing. And any time you say that, I think that's a real credit to coaching. I think the Redskins with Joe Gibbs and the Broncos here with Dan Reeves, I think are two of the better coaches in the league. They had another good game, big game now. It didn't look like it would be a couple of weeks ago. The Eagles, who shot out Atlanta today, will face the Giants. Will Hype and Winder, second and goal from the five. 57 seconds left to play in the first half. Elway throws it up for grabs and throws it out of the end zone. It's sort of a casual bootleg. Elway didn't think it to be too casual for him because he's telling someone that they wrong the wrong the ran the wrong pattern. I think that's where he, he ended up throwing. He ended up throwing it out there to Watson. I don't think that's who he was complaining about. I think someone else might have run a wrong pattern. Someone, I think he was looking for someone inside that did something wrong, although Watson wasn't open either. Third and five at the five. Third and goal at the five. Here's Elway into the end zone. A flag is down. Penalty flag down. It's going to be holding against Denver. You know, just up here, you could see that coming, the way that Elway was looking. Usually a quarterback is looking downfield and at his receivers. He was looking straight ahead that time. Number 54, offense, third down. The center, Keith Bishop. Of course, Keith, Keith Bishop is the guy that would, going, that would be blocking against Randy White. Randy White isn't in there. We can see him there. He's holding against Otto. He had his left hand up there. I don't know that Elway needed that block. He'll bring it back to the 15. It's still third and goal. And Elway will operate this time from the spread. He has Watson out to the right. Jackson is out there with him. He has time. He has Gerald Willite for a touchdown. Will Hype made. 15-yard shot from Elway. Will Hype was up there as a wing back on the right-hand side. And I'll tell you, when you can do this type of thing, when you can be down on the goal line, get a 10-yard penalty, doesn't affect you, just come right back, Soon get another touchdown. I tell you, that is championship type football. That's a championship catch, too, by Wilhite. That ball was burning. Carlos has his extra point blocked. Rod Fellows came around the corner to knock it down. That'll make it 22 to nothing. In favor of the Denver Broncos, who have turned the second quarter into a highlight show. Watch Elway here how he drills this thing. 
I mean, he steps, he gets everything on it. Some guy says mustard. I don't know if that's mustard or velocity or something that just looks like a shot out of a cannon. Let's watch Ron Fellows against the extra point. He comes from this side, comes in around here, and blocks it right here in front. Block. Very Watch good. him. He comes from that outside there. You see now he flattens out right down the line of scrimmage, lays out, and there he gets the block. I don't know if Carlos got that ball up very high. Didn't it look like it was a little low? He usually gets it up high. But from where Fellows was able to block it, it would seem that he didn't. Where'd these barefoot guys come from? I don't know. What was that you wrote on the screen right there at the end? Doink. Oh. Doink. That was where he blocked it, right where I put doink. A high kick this time by Carlos. It's Levette. Five yards deep in the end zone. Will not bring it out. Denver 22, Dallas nothing. Second quarter, 40 seconds left to play in the first half. At the half, the NFL today, Brent, Dick Vermeil with scores and highlights, and Irv Cross is here with us for a live report from down on the field here at Mile High Stadium. John Elway. Remember the year that he was drafted? That was a year of the quarterback. They all came out. Elway was drafted first. Then Marino was the last one drafted. And he went to the Super Bowl with the Dolphins. A lot of people wondered, did, it, you know, did they make a mistake? Should he not have been drafted first? Of course, he was traded from the Colts. All that controversy. Well, I think he's answering those questions now. Here's Pelour. Down is Pelour. The Broncos may have it. I don't know who has it. Glenn Titansor, I believe, number 63, came up with it. Randy Robbins made a hit. And the Cowboys are lucky that time. Hey, that was Randy Robbins, the safety, the strong safety. He's taking a place of Dennis Smith. He was up in the line of scrimmage, and he came like he was shot out of a gun. Like the Broncos are taking a timeout now. They want to see if they can get another one. Well, I'll tell you, he really comes. Watch me. He's going to come from the left side of the screen. He's outside, and now he's going to come into the picture. There he comes, right there. Watch the hit that he put on Pelour. Whoo! That'll separate a man from a ball. Danny White may be glad that he's not playing. Yeah, you know, they would, you know, the Cowboy, you know, if they, if everyone had, you know, like on Dallas, how they bring guys back with dreams? Yeah. You know, if, uh, everyone ought to have like five moves and a dream. You know, maybe they could you, bring Roger Starr back back. You mean the television show Dallas? Yeah, the television show yeah. Dallas. Yeah, I mean, a guy leaves and then they just bring him back and he's dreaming. Maybe the Cowboys wish they could bring some guys back like Danny White, Randy White, you know, bring him back. It was just a dream. Kevin Brooks. Well, your ratings go up. Tony Dorsett. Doesn't work in football. Second and 25. That's all the Broncos timeouts, by the way. They're back at the five yard line. I bet the Broncos are thinking right now, I have to take a timeout, they have to think of trying to get another safety. Some kind of blitz here. If you're the Cowboys now, you think about, let's just run it out since they're out of timeouts. That's what I would think about. They give it to Walker. Walker gets out. Stopped finally by Carl Mecklenburg. End of the first half. That's the end of it. With the score. A dominant Bronco team leading the Dallas Cowboys 22 to nothing. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Honda, who invites you to experience the CRX SI at your local Honda dealer. Bud Light, everything else is just a light. And by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. And unfortunately, that's the weather picture for tonight. Roger is a weatherman. He knows the difference between little storms and big storms. And recently, when he saw a big one coming, the first place he went was his Honda generator dealer. Hey, you're the weatherman. I need a real good generator. And by the time the storm hit, Roger was prepared. 
with the Honda generator, because you never know what the weather will bring. I like your thinking. It's a solution we've been searching for. Well, we've included networking, multi-user systems, as well as PC-compatible workstations and software. And I like your installation, support, training, service. Radio Shack Computer Centers have it all. I know we can do business. Tandy Computers at Radio Shack Computer Centers. In business, for business. Sunday. Who are you protecting? Can Angela prove her brother-in-law's innocence? Why did he confess to a murder he didn't commit? Murder, she wrote. Then, in a land that broke most men, she had to fight to survive. One woman, four kids, no money. Fight the man who would destroy her. Fight the man who loved her. Get off my land! Jason Robards, Jack Thompson, and Linda Evans as you've never seen her before. A new CBS miniseries, The Last Frontier, all tonight. We began the day with four unbeaten teams, including the Super Bowl champion. He's going to go. And he's going to go all the way if he can get the And all the way he went as Jim McMahon lit the fire that ignited Chicago, and they went to 5-0. Oh. Meanwhile, the Washington Redskins went deep into the heart of Dixie, down to New Orleans, where it was George Rogers who scored what turned out to be the winning touchdown. Trying to get wide. And pulls his way into the end zone. Touchdown. But the Atlanta Falcons were not as successful. The Philadelphia Eagles, coached by Buddy Ryan, stormed the Falcons with seven sacks and recorded a shutout, 16 to nothing. Welcome to New York, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger with Dick Vermeer. Hey, Buddy Ryan's doing a number with that defense. They held Eric Dickerson last week. Now they shut out the Falcons. It's apparent that the new program has matured now. They're playing well together. They believe in themselves. And the big thing, confidence that they can win. And the Eagles will next be taking on the New York Giants at 2-3. and three. The Falcons are 4-1. and one. Now, New England over Miami. The Dolphins are one in four. This is the worst start in the history of Don Shula's professional coaching career. Watch Craig James behind some powerful blocking get to the corner and score. It was 17 to nothing. Now, Steve Grogan was wigwagging signals over there and helping out with Tom Ramsey. Little did he know that Tony Eason would have to be replaced. Eason got it to Irving Fryer here for a 38-yard score. Dick, what about the injury to Eason? How serious? They say it's a cracked rib, Brent, but they won't know for sure detail-wise until tomorrow. All right, and the Patriots are 3-2 and two with that 34-7 win. We've had our biggest instant replay controversy of the season yet. 24-17. <laughs> now, the Chiefs were leading in this game 17 to nothing. Now, this play was called a touchdown. And so they showed this angle. And the official upstairs, watch the right foot. He calls down to the field and he says, incomplete. The referee thinks that he said complete. Now, now you're a coach. <laughs> what do you think about all this turmoil surrounding instant replay? You want me to tell you the truth? Yeah, tell me the truth. I think now the fans are finding out what coaches have known for a long time. They do make mistakes. It can drive you crazy. Yeah, but should we keep instant replay? Oh, sure, it? because eventually they'll smooth it out and everything else. But it does prove that, hey, they're humans and they do make mistakes. Well, the Raiders will take it. They're not giving it back. It's 24-17. <laughs> they bet. go to 2-3, and three, and the Chiefs to 3-2 and two on the season. The Redskins, as we told you, they're 5-0, 14-6 over the Saints. The Giants now 4-1 on the year, 13-6 over the Cardinals. Cleveland over Pittsburgh. This was perhaps the most entertaining game of the day. Marty Schottenheimer's Browns came from behind twice to win it. What a kickoff return here, Dick. Gerald McNeil takes one the distance, 100 yards, the third kickoff return for a touchdown this year with over 400 attempts. So that's a great play by Gerald McNeil. Five foot seven inches, nicknamed the Ice Cube. And he <laughs> stuck an ice pick in the heart of the Steelers. First time that Art Modell's ever won a game in Three Rivers. Standing ovation for Ernest Biner, who gets in 27-24. And the Browns at three and two are tied with the Cincinnati Bengals atop the AFC Central Division. Detroit over Houston today, 24 to 13. And what about this combination for Daryl Rogers? Eric Hippel hits Herman Hunter, the cast off from the Philadelphia Eagles, number 36. A little live right over the middle. He walks in, no one to make the play. Some cast off on that play. Yeah, you said 24 13, the final count. And Cincinnati runs it up. The Green Bay Packers are 0-5. That is the worst start in the history of that storied franchise. Chicago, 23 to nothing. Jim McMahon was 12 of 18, 214 yards and one touchdown. We'll check the late breaking games right after these messages from your local stations.
next Saturday. It's the Michigan Wolverines, a team of explosive dimensions, piloted by the accurate and agile arm of Jim Harbaugh, a quarterback oozing with finesse, and ignited by the tailback attack of Jamie Morris. But the Wolverine defense must control Michigan State's one-man explosion. Lorenzo White, hot on the hunt for the Heisman. Or see a battle for Pac-10 supremacy between UCLA and Arizona next Saturday on CBS Sports. This is CBS.